So today I'm just going to go through Java Cloud Service on top of Oracle Generation 2 Cloud Infrastructure. Uh, for those of you who haven't played around with Java Cloud Service, um, it's basically uh, an, an Oracle Enterprise Edition uh, Java WebLogic server uh, with loads and loads of features. You can get multiple domain names, uh, coherence for uh, web caching, web caching your uh, customer requests uh, you can I, I'm just kind of flicking through the uh, documentation here just just for you to get a basically an overview of Java Cloud Service and um, but it's a really really good uh, product and not a whole lot of people know about it uh, obviously everybody's familiar with Java but when we're looking at um, the web logic in the cloud uh, a lot of people have web lo logic and it's usually pre-built into a lot of Oracle products, but I'm just going to build it on top of Oracle's cloud infrastructure uh, for you today. But I'm just looking, at, if anyone has looked at my previous videos, we, you would have seen that the Oracle cloud infrastructure uh, uses uh, compartments and there is a comp compartment called the managed compartment for pass. And that is a compartment where your platform services uh, by Oracle will be provisioned but what you have to do uh, to basically update visibility and accessibility is add a couple of policies so with uh, OCI you have to add policies to groups to grant users in that group access to resources so there is some policies here that I have added to to that I have got my administrator to add to my compartment and manage and the PSM root compartment so basically the policy that I have added, you can see some of them here, I've said allow P service PSM to manage all resources in compartment e keyhole. So what that means is when I provision the Oracle Java Cloud service, I want to be able to provision on a database. So I have a provision a database here, uh, it's in a private subnet and I want Java Cloud service, uh, so which is basically my WebLogic Enterprise Edition to uh, provision its schemas and uh, and tables in that database so that is how you do it you need to add the policies so when you're provisioning your uh, web logic instance that that database is visible uh, in the console so you can select it as the the underlying database for your web logic instance uh, another important thing is you need to add that policy so you can control the networking and security list because if you want to deploy um, an application on top of your web logic server that's sorry my page is just needs to be refreshed here if you want to uh, yeah as i was saying add an application on top of your web logic server uh, you need to be able to control who can access that web logic server uh, so you can lock it down so if you didn't have these appropriate policies everything will be provisioned in the managed compartment for pass and you would not be able to um, edit, uh, edit a lot of the features. So I'm just going to bring you through the Java Cloud Service Console here today. So we're going to go through and basically what's going to happen is there's going to be a WebLogic instance provision on top of that database in our cloud infrastructure. So I'm just going to call it JCS uh, Description WebLogic EE Test and Development. Uh, really good just for testing around. Um, a notification email when the service is provisioned is going to go to my uh, corporate email address uh, region. I'm going to provision this in London. Uh, availability domain uh, AD1. Uh, subnet, I don't really care really where it's going to be provisioned. Uh, service level in Java Cloud Service you can find in the documentation. I'm just going to choose the standard uh, edition. I'm just going to choose the latest software edition. I just want to go through that now in a second. Um, so there's different features with the edition, and you can find those in the document here. Uh, you can see some of these, some of the information here. Uh, standard edition, you do get J Developer, Web Logic Server, Top Link, and the Oracle Traffic Director, which is uh, a load balancer, and you get the Enterprise Pack for your Eclipse uh, IDE. Um, I've chose the Enterprise Edition because I want the uh, ability to be able to cluster uh, servers and Java SE Advanced, so it's more advanced uh, Java SE development kit and high performance, um, I don't need that. But all you have to do is go on to cloud.oracle.com and under application development 
and look for Jata and you will find all of this information. So I'm going to hit next here, so I'll bring you into the next screen. Uh, compute shape, I'm going to choose 2.1, so that's one Intel core with 15 gigs of RAM. Uh, typically you would use 2.2, uh, 2.3 here. Uh, just up the amount of cores and the RAM. Uh, so SSH public key, I'm going to use the same key that I've been using all along. Load balancer, uh, you can choose any load balancer you want, uh, and different protocols, round robin, IP hash, these connections. It depends what you want to provision on top of WebLogic. But in this case, I don't need any load balancer really, uh, so I'm just going to choose none. Uh, it's just a single instance that I'm provisioning. Uh, SSH public key, so I'm just going to paste the, the key that I've been using for all the uh, compute instances that you've seen me provisioning so far. Uh, password, I, I'm actually going to take the, the, the default password that, um, that I've been using all along. Um, and then our database, so we want to use the database that we have pre-provisioned already and that's in the private subnet. Uh, you can also use that our autonomous transaction processing with this database, uh, recently just certified. Um, so I have a couple of, so what I do have is I have a container database with multiple pluggable databases. Uh, so it's a multi-tenant feature. Uh, database configuration, uh, that's what you gave in in the previous uh, time that when you provisioned the database. Uh, so I apologies. I actually have to make a make a change here. So I didn't choose an available uh, subnet. So I had to just go back there, and uh, that's why you saw the screen flip. So I just went back to the previous screen with all the same settings, and I just chose a subnet. Um, and I'm actually going to use the password that uh, Oracle provides as an example. Uh, because I'm pretty terrible with passwords and I'll probably forget it uh, when, when I try to log in for the demo. Uh, so password, that's the database password that we used in the console when we previously provisioned the database. Uh, so I'm just going to hit next and everything should be okay there. Um, so it's going to take a couple of seconds just to get all the variables and the information. So you just get a, um, a clarification screen here with all the details that you've put in. So I'm just going to look, everything looks okay, WebLogic server, uh, license type, I have BYOL here. Um, you, if you want to talk about licensing and pricing, uh, don't be afraid to reach out. Um, there's a dedicated account manager for, your, for you here in Oracle, so they can talk you through all of that. Um, but Oracle is making a lot of push, uh, a lot of strides in the cloud here. Uh, it's one of the reasons I just want to raise a bit of awareness about that. So Java Cloud Service is provisioning here. Uh, you can look at the logs. So what's actually being provisioned here is it, it is a large, a large enough server uh, being provisioned on top of a database. Um, so that could take a bit of time. So I just waited 10 minutes and I came back in, in here again into the platform screen. I'm just in my Java Cloud Service. Um, area, so I'm just going to go into the service console again. Um, so it's been provisioned here now. Uh, there's no provisioning sign, so hopefully everything is up and running. Uh, so I'm just going to look at the delete and uh, instance creation history. So I'm just going to click that there. Okay, so I don't really want to see that. So what we can do now is we can, the Oracle Enterprise Manager is pre-provisioned with this service, so that's really really good. And you also get the Fusion Middleware console. Um, so if you've been using Middleware or Oracle Enterprise Manager, you will be familiar with the next screen. So I'll just bring it up into the screen here. I'm in Cognino because I've been uh, working with loads of different services today and I don't want to be um, being also auto-suggested passwords. So Enterprise Manager, Middleware Control. Uh, so I'm not too familiar with these um, these uh, these are typically on-premise Oracle technologies. Um, I can get into the into the screen um, uh, and just have a look around the console and uh, and show you guys around. So this is my WebLogic server admin console. Um, so you can see here two uh, two okay instances, uh, but really really good. Really really quick, quickly to get this up and running. Uh, if we were to install this on an on-premise uh, uh, server, it could take a lot of time. And here's my Fusion middleware. Uh, control panel. Uh, this way you would see, um, I'm just look, looking in the JDBC driver, so if you're going to be connecting to a database, it doesn't have to be Oracle, but any database with uh, Java driver compatibility, 
uh, but this is where you can also uh, make use of web services. Uh, it can be REST, SOAP, or any of these other different protocols. Um, but what I do want to go back into now is actually into the, the Oracle Cloud infrastructure, so you can see the server from a different angle. So this is when we're talking about the managed compartment for pass. So I just clicked in there now, and you have a public IP which corresponds to the IP of your enterprise manager and middleware console. And because I added those policies earlier on, this is why I can control the security list and networking of my WebLogic server. So if you want to lock it down for test and development, just your on-premise network, network, you're free to do so.